Welcome back to Mindful of Tech. In this video, we're going to be taking another look at the Windows 98 machine that we had a look at in our first video and attempt to install this Radeon 7000 relatively appropriate period-wise graphics card. Uh, we may find that we do not, in fact, have the AGP slot in this all-in-one compact desktop to install it to, but that's okay because we have motherboards. And with that, we will open ourselves up to a possible processor upgrade. And we can upgrade from the 256 megabytes of RAM to some more RAM. Should be good fun. But before we do any of that, we're going to get the thing cleaned up so that we can open it up, take a look at what's inside. First things first, we will be cleaning the keyboard, the mouse, and then we'll have a little go at the case. So without further ado, let's pull some keys. Okay, with all the keys pulled, we can turn our attention to getting them clean, as well as cleaning the rather horrendous keyboard itself, uh, which will require a little bit of disassembly. We'll get to that in just a moment. Before we do any of that, we'll get some towels down and uh, get to cleaning. Okay, so that's the keys pulled, soaking in some nice warm water. The main thing we've got to clean up is the actual uh, keyboard case itself. Uh, clearly something has been spilled in here at some point, probably coffee or something like that. Um, the actual internals, uh, such as the rubber pads, are pretty clean, uh, as is the actual contact pad itself. So I'm probably not going to bother cleaning that. Um, sometimes that can cause cause problems. I will give the rest of the external keyboard case a run under the tap and a scrub down with some fairy liquid. Uh, but before we do any of that, we are unfortunately going to have to go through the laborious process of taking an old toothbrush to every single key in this warm water. I've let it soak for a little while now, so it should be about ready to go. And all we do is simply take them out one key at a time, give them a good clean down, paying any attention to particularly dirty areas.
Okay, so while we wait for the parts of the keyboard that I've just given a good scrub down to dry, we're going to turn our attention to the mouse. Now, once again, the condition of this mouse isn't terrible. Uh, it just needs a bit of a scrub down. We'll take the rollerball out, disassemble it, just make sure it's not full of any gunk from any spillages or anything like that. Okay, that is the mouse cleaned up. Uh, unfortunately, I think I lost the, the footage of it actually getting cleaned there. Um, I'm having a lot of camera problems at the moment, uh, trying to do things in a slightly different way, um, which is not working out too well on the technology side, but that's a subject for another video. So with the mouse clean, we can now get on to the bit that we've all been waiting for, taking a look inside the actual Windows 98 machine. So we'll clear some space, we'll get the camera down and we'll take a look. Right, quite heavy for such a compact little thing. Let's open her up and see what we're dealing with. So this is the actual first time I'm opening this case up. I have no idea what it's gonna be like inside. Hopefully fairly easily upgradable. Let's find out. Oh, <laughs> it's not a side panel. It's one complete part. Okay, so now we can see what's inside. Oof. Okay, so as I suspected, we have no AGP slot in here. Uh, where's my pointy stick? I would expect to see one around here somewhere. Actually, see we've got a load of empty slots, which must have had something extra on a better version of this motherboard. Uh, what we do have is the network card and the processor. And in here somewhere, we've got some RAM. So we are going to have to replace the whole motherboard, which does mean as well I'm going to have to switch over to AMD because all the motherboards I've got are AMD motherboards. But then we can put in our uh, AGP ready on 7000. Everything else in here I'm going to leave. Uh, so CD drive will remain, the uh, floppy drive will remain, and the hard drive as it is currently functioning. Uh, we may hit some problems when we try and boot it up with a whole new motherboard and processor etc in it but we will cross that bridge when we come to it and you can just see just in here the absolutely tiny cpu cooler um, so we'll probably put a bigger one on there um, which again i think i'll have to because of the socket compatibility but what we will end up with is a windows 98 machine that can play games um, something you may remember as well from the first video was that the sound at the front wasn't working Turns out I had it plugged into the wrong slot in the back, the wrong hole in the back. So it should have been in here. I had it in here. So that, that is now fixed. I won't have to mess around with the sound. I probably will keep this little front sound thing on here. Although I may well end up putting a sound blaster in here. Uh, and if I do, that's got its own front panel. So that'll come off. But yeah, we'll get the camera down and we'll uh, get a close up view of the disassembly of this thing. Okay, so let's get a screwdriver and start taking bits apart. Oh, actually, before we do that, let's remove some cables. So, old Molnex cables. Ooh, a bit stiff coming out. I can leave that in the hard drive end. Hopefully they won't get in the way too much. The old 
fluffy drive. <sighs> mm, also, actually, we can leave all these plugged in. Let's just see if we can pull the ribbon cables out the top. We do, of course, have ooh, the front panel connectors are all over the place on this board. Hoping I'm not going to have to remove the hard drives or anything to get this motherboard out. But it's, uh, it's quite tight in there. There's quite a lot of motherboard tucked behind these bays here. But uh, we'll see what happens. This is the power cable, uh, the audio cable for the front sound. Now, I have a horrible feeling that this motherboard might be screwed in behind these bays. Maybe not, maybe not. Let's find out. It's actually very clean in here. This is honestly the first time this machine's probably been opened up. I mean, since it was taken home from work. We've got some dust and things across the, the top, but the actual overall machine is very clean. Kind of having nightmares about dead spiders and such, but nothing too scary going on in here. You know, it's in, uh, it's in horror stories about Xbox, and even Xbox Ones that are worse than this when it comes to dead wildlife. Overcompensating screwdriver, I should be able to reach. Way. I think it's just held in. Spot it. If you spotted it before me, then well done. Leave a leave a comment below. Ooh. Oh wow. Okay, this I/O plate is rather more complicated than I thought. Board is free. Let's remove whatever that is. What is that? Oh well. So there we are. Motherboard is out. I don't know if we can remove this weird backplate arrangement. Probably not. Which just means they're going to end up with a naked. Another board in the back there, that's fine. But what's interesting is this. Let's get the whole camera. What's this thing? So it's attached to just a normal two pin that was attached to the motherboard. Is it like a, it must be something to do with locking it, maybe? If that's pressed in, you put like a bar in here and bolt it in and it'll lock the machine, I don't know. But unfortunately I pulled it out of the motherboard before I looked at what it was actually attached to. Well, I've never seen that before. If you know what that is, do let me know. So I'm sure it's some sort of security thing, like you put a bar in here and that'll disable the computer without unlocking it. In some ways this is designed as a work computer, so it probably was a security feature. Yeah, certainly never seen one before. Cool, let me know in the comments if you know what that thing is. Now, we've got an empty computer. So, 
we're ready to go. Just stop the recording for a moment, prep the parts, and we'll decide what we're going to do next. Okay, so we have some hardware sorted out. Uh, we're going to be replacing the motherboard with this Gigabyte F, no, Gigabyte 7VM333M-RZ. I'm sure you are all the better for knowing exactly what model this is. Uh, this is a socket 462, which means it will take the Athlon 2400 that I'm going to put in it. Uh, my main reason for picking this one, it's not perfectly age appropriate, um, although it is 99, so it's not the end of the world. Um, this one has the little pads on it that will stop too much pressure being applied from the uh, from the uh, heat sink and fan which i'm going to be installing um the others that i have those have perished and i can't be bothered to figure out a way of attaching others um we, i've also removed the so the ram in the original machine was this weird little half stick half stick uh, 128 meg and then this was a bigger 64 meg stick so I guess at some point it was upgraded. Uh, we're going to be upgrading that to 512 meg, uh, PC100 uh, to keep it appropriate. Um, I have some PC100 sticks here, um, which is probably what I'm gonna pop in, but I am gonna try these PC2100, although, no I'm not, no I'm not, I'm being an idiot, they won't fit. In fact, ah, they will. It's all good. So actually, yes, the, the RAM that came out of that motherboard is very, very slow compared to the RAM that I'll be able to put in. So we'll be using these two 256 sticks for a total of 512. Uh, I also just like the fact that they've still got a little sticker on them that's nice and thematic. You know. Twi twin moss whoever they are some dead company but we'll we'll keep their legacy alive by putting these sticks in um we'll also be installing the agp graphics card which obviously the agp slot on this board was the main reason for putting in a new board and i am going to install this sound blaster order g2 uh it's a bit newer um uh, so it's not exactly age appropriate, but man, does it look cool. And I want to preserve it in some way because I always remember this card from when I was younger and I wanted it so much and I never, never got one. So the fact that I now have one in my trash pile makes me want to use it, which also means we'll be installing the front panel. This was the main reason I wanted one. Look how cool that is. It's got MIDI, it's got lining, it's got all sorts. If you hold it the right way up, it's even better. Um, so that will be going in as well. So I will be taking out the front panel audio. I also realized that this that I thought was a network card is actually a modem, uh, so I have no need for that. And no need for this old RAM. So, let's get it set up, see what happens. Okay. <laughs> Here we are with the motherboard, and we will be installing the processor, which we'll do very straightforward. And boom, processor installed, nice and easy. Pop the RAM in next. And that's a working computer pretty much. All we have to do, pop the heatsink on. Which is marginally complicated, just in terms of the amount of pressure that you have to apply on these things. Uh, we'll also need some thermal paste. Okay, last little bit. Oh, I hate these old heat sinks. Slam the screw into the motherboard like that. That's not what you want to do. Yeah, I'm actually physically straining to get this thing on. There we go. Hopefully this will reach. Oh, that's fine. Go out this way. There's power for the fan. I thought I was putting the fan on the right way around after I cleaned it up, but looks like I put it on the wrong way around. Never mind. And that's it. I mean that, if that's all you want, we'll boot. Uh, we even have VGA out 
on the motherboard itself so we have no need to install a graphics card but obviously we want a graphics card because gaming so we'll get it in the actual case and then we'll install our sound card and our graphics card so can we install front panel io it's quite tight where is front panel io on this board so as anyone that's built a computer before will know the front panel is usually the most irritating bit um, this is the front panel here so actually it'll probably be easy enough to install once the motherboard's in the case so we'll just adjust the camera and then we'll see about doing that okay so first things first we're going to get this motherboard in the case this is absolutely painful to any system builders out there I apologize but I really don't want to have to take things out of here this CPU cooler isn't going to work in this case Right, so after a lot of off-camera faffing around and a lot of choice language that wouldn't be appropriate for YouTube, I've managed to get the original heatsink in the case. Um, this was achieved by removing the, well, moving the hard drive backwards. It actually has this quite interesting uh, sort of swing-out mechanism on the side here. Um, I'm not going to open that again because it was painful enough getting it back on. Uh, so the hard drive is now at a slightly weird angle, but... As you can see, everything fits in the case, which is nice. Now, you can see here, we have our new heatsink. We have the AMD installed. I haven't installed the graphics card as yet in this AGP slot because I wanna see whether or not it posts. Um, I've also attached with some cable ties a front intake fan because um, so i'm a little bit worried about heat in here the only thing actually cooling this thing is the power supply itself uh, with the exhaust fan um, so obviously we now have a hotter processor and indeed the graphics card as well uh, will be a little bit warmer so hopefully that should create a little bit more airflow in the case and allow us to keep the thing a bit cooler but i'm hoping everything is set up correctly we'll power it on at the back i believe i've got all my front panel connectors in right uh, we will decide, well, we will see whether or not it's going to post on this screen behind me here. So without further ado, let's have a look. Oh, power's on. Fan is loud. Hey! Okay. So blah 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 secondary id channel no conductor cable that's probably that weird blue cable that i found that i wasn't sure what it was for uh we'll figure that out it is showing the athlon 2400 uh we are showing however much memory that is i need to work that out um blah 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 cmos checksum so i haven't got a cmos battery in there yet but it posts definitely posts very loud. Might have to reconsider that fan. And that's going to be it for today. Um, we will run benchmarking and things in another video, I think, um, as I have had more than enough of this computer for one day. I am hot, I am dirty, and I'm hungry. So we'll leave that there. Uh, next video, we will install the graphics card, we'll install the sound card, uh, and we will have a go at benchmarking the thing as well as looking at some of the games that we can play on it. So 
That should be pretty good fun. Certainly more fun <laughs> than putting the thing together was. Although I have to say, I was fairly impressed by this little swing out thing. I don't know if I can... No, ah, no, that's in too tight. But uh, that was that was a cool bit of case design. Um, I might try and track down another fan. I'm sure I do have a larger, slower fan somewhere. Um, because that's that's super loud. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, I'll probably be putting the keyboard and things back together off camera so that next time it is all set up and ready to go for some benchmarking. So I hope you enjoyed yourself. Come back next time. Hopefully have that up in about a week or so. If you like the video, feel free to like and subscribe. If you didn't like it, there's a button for that as well. And if you want to talk about anything further, you can come and find me on Mastodon or chuck your suggestions, ideas, questions in the comments below. Hope you've enjoyed yourself. Come back soon. Be well.